Hello, baseball fans, and welcome. Saturday baseball on the show. It's the Miami Marlins and the Arizona Diamondbacks. Alongside Chris Singleton, I'm John Chambi, and seeing you the big bat in the lineup so far this year, Cattell Marte. Always exciting to see him in action, and it seems like he consistently finds a way to impact the game. Yeah, Boog, it, it's offensively at the plate, defensively when he's on the bases. I and mean, this guy's just a heads-up player, but he's got so much talent, and he makes the most of that. I believe it starts with his preparation because you never see him give away an at-bat. So just about set now and on the mound in this one Jordan Montgomery and Chris he seems a lot more comfortable pitching here at home than on the road right indeed Boog and there can be several factors whether it's just sleeping in your own bed being around your family going to your favorite restaurant before you come to the ballpark I don't know what it is for him but the numbers are clear that he's been dominant in this place the only frustration is you see how good he is at home and if you're a teammate or a coach you're looking and saying hey if you can be almost as good as that on the road you're going to have a great year and we're going to win more ball games. First pitch, seven o'clock. Kicks and deals. Good eye in that spot. One and one. It was a pretty good pitch top of the strike zone we're seeing more fastballs in that location hitters especially with two strikes have to be ready to pull the trigger now the third baseman and a foul ball And a pitch. Base hit center field. So they get a man aboard with a one out single. But I don't think that pitch would have been called a strike, but he did such a nice job of pulling his hands tight to the body and just getting enough of the barrel on it to be hard enough back up the middle for a knock. Luis Arise stands in. It's been a tough stretch for him at the plate. Runner on the go. Ground ball right side. Walker takes it himself. No chance at the double play with the runner in motion. Okay, let's check out the lineup. Batting seven, someone they're hoping breaks out in this one. Jazz Chisholm Jr. Yeah, he's struggling a little bit right now. I mean, he knows it. His team knows it. Everybody in the stands knows it, but they need him to turn it around. You know, I'm told he's putting in some extra work in the cages, as he should be doing. So we'll see if he can break out right here. So now it's the four-hole hitter, Jake Berger. Oh. First pitch, just misses. Kicks and fires. That's the ball. Well, no need to go right at this guy. First base is open. He can hurt you, so make him expand his zone. If he doesn't, give him a walk. Next offering misses, and it's 3-0. Brian De La Cruz waits on deck for Miami. And a pitch. And that's in for a strike. Two outs, and he walked him. I don't think he really wanted to pitch to him right there anyhow. And now for the Marlins, Brian De La Cruz. He's done a great job making contact recently, hitting better than 350 this month. First pitch doesn't find the zone.
First and second, two down here in the second game of the series. Two on, two outs. Swing and a ground ball out to short. And that is that. Marlins strand a pair, and now Arizona gets its first opportunity in a scoreless ball game. Major League Baseball is on the show. And we're back. And starting this one, Jesus Lazardo. And Chris, pitching on the road has not been particularly kind to him. Yeah, and you don't want to be too quick to say that he can't pitch on the road. Sometimes you know, it's, it's just a matter of luck. It's not having a feel. Difference between the bullpen mound to the mound out there on the playing field. Don't know what it is, but I know this. He's got good enough stuff to overcome and get it done on the road as well as at home. So we'll see what he's able to do in this one. De La Cruz makes the grab one away. Time to take a look at the Diamondbacks lineup. These guys can really pile up the runs, Chris. They're among the top teams in scoring this year. Yeah, and when you can get a lead and be out in front, it really changes what that opposing manager can do with his bullpen. And on top of that, it helps your own pitching staff. It gives them more margin for error. So instead of guys squeezing the ball, trying to throw darts and be perfect, they can relax, let the ball come out of their hands and pitch effectively. So that offense and the ability to score runs also helps the pitching and the defense. And he deals. He swings and fouls one off. Just missed. One out, base is empty. Not even close there. And the count is three and one. Spoils the two strike pitch, and he'll see another. And now the lefty. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. One down, base is empty. Hey. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. He didn't make it easy for him on the mound, but they still that get the strikeout. Well, getting a good look at the pitcher here in the first inning isn't a bad thing. I know he struck out, but you can live with that as long as the other hitters in this lineup can learn something from it. Cattell Marte in the box now. No balls and a strike. He's a bad ball hitter, so even if you get him to chase pitches outside the zone, he still might beat you. Not an easy out by any means. Two down, nobody on. Bounce to the right. Bell. Tosses to the pitcher, covering the bag. That's the third out. Inning over. End of one. And we're still scoreless. Back here in the desert. Second inning, set to go. And the batter now, Josh Bell. He's got pop, which is a little sneaky because... He's so comfortable with taking his base hits to the opposite field, but he can jump you if you make a mistake. Montgomery back to work. No, Just off ball. the inside edge, Montgomery okay. measures six feet, six inches, 31 years old, and he was drafted in the fourth round back in 2014. pitch and that one fouled off
And a pitch. Fouls it off. Still one and two. Line and a base hit into right. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Batting seven. The center fielder, number two. Jazz Chisholm Jazz Jr. now. Chisholm Homered Jr. in the ball game yesterday afternoon. Tapped at the plate, but it's a foul ball. And a pitch. On the ground right side. Four, six, three. And they turn the double play. Sometimes double plays get turned so quickly that you don't really get to appreciate all of the finer details and how these guys execute them. Right there, really nice footwork and a good feed to second was the key to pulling it off. Abasail Garcia up to the plate. Definitely scuffling at the dish lately. Only two hits over the last five games. That one missed. Next pitch in for a strike. And the count even at one. Well, it's a good time to step out of the box, take a deep breath, reset. A couple of change-ups. Probably won't see another one here. The pitch. Ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. And that keeps the inning going. He needed that one. It's been a tough stretch to play lately. Once you get the ball by the pitcher, there's a lot of base hits up the middle, even on ground balls. So a nice job to use that big hole and get himself a hit. And now the catcher comes up to him. Christian Bethencourt. And it's fouled away. Garcia off of first with two away. Montgomery picks over. Back in safe, really close. Two outs. Base hit. That was smoked through the infield. Throw in holds the lead runner at second. Two on now with two away. Two consecutive base hits for this team. Really good swing right there. He got a pitch that he knew he could handle. Allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer. And he hit the ball on the screws. Runner in scoring position now. And a good opportunity to push across the first run. Oh, this ball's down. And that could bring in a run. The throw is offline. And he's in to score. On the board first. It's one zip. Didn't take long to get a result for that at bat. Showed a willingness to drive that pitch the opposite way. Didn't get jumpy. Didn't try to pull the ball. He let it get deep. Took the barrel right to it and then extended through the swing for the line drive base hit. So first and second with two outs. Now the number two hitter. One for one with a single so far. Swinging a foul over the screen and back out of play. Traffic on the bases with one already in here at the top of the second. Out to short, Perdomo. They take the force out. They limit the damage here. But they pick up one run on the RBI single. It's now 1-0. Back after this on the show. Back here at Chase Field, ready to go for the last half of the inning. And now the first baseman, Christian Walker. Walker. The wind and the pitch. That one finds the zone. 0-1. One, one. Oh. 
One and ball. there's a ball. Boog, Rusty Valentine umpiring behind the plate in this one. He has what you might call a tall strike zone, both at the letters and down below the knees. Yeah, and I'm sure that helps a lot of pitchers we see today who like to work up, down, trying to change eye levels and swing paths. Two and one. Yep, exactly. Sharp grounder, that's through for a base hit. That leaves him without a throw, and they can't get the out. He was all over that one. Just a simple ground ball the other way. They had eyes on it, man. Sometimes that's all you need to do. Just let the ball travel, put the ball in play, and just hope it finds a hole. Here's Lourdes Gurriel Jr. One run batted in yesterday. Their only run of the game. What a no. It's a pitch out. Nothing doing. And that's ball one. Tying run is at first. Bottom half of inning number two. Fouled off. He was late. Instead of letting the hitter get his arms extended, tied him up a little bit, slightly up, slightly in. And that one fouled off. Really going after him here. All fastballs to get ahead in the count. The pitch. Oh. And another ball. Man, oh man, I don't know how you take that pitch. That's as close as it gets. Rudder at first with no outs here. And that's down and away. On this count, runner not known for his speed, but I think you got to put him in motion. Try to avoid a double play here, Boo. Payoff pitch. Fouled off again. And it remains three and two. The fastball at the bottom of the zone can be very effective. Just got to keep it on the corners. And here it comes. And yeah, there's ball four. That's a great at bat. He saw a lot of pitches and earned a walk. Base knock and now a free pass. This has the makings of a big inning if they can get a couple more quality at bats. First and second, no outs. Here's the center fielder, Randall Gritchick. So RBI spot, but Chris, this is a guy that is not really swinging the bat all that well here. In this situation, you have a real good opportunity to get swings and misses and record a strikeout. I think you attack him in this spot. Breaks his bat and pops it up. That's a base hit. Runner around third on his way to the plate. He'll score. The Diamondbacks tie it up. It's 1 1. Went up there looking to be aggressive and got something he could handle. Just a flare down that right field line, and he got it to drop in fair. I guarantee you. He was yelling, get down, get down, as he ran out of the box because, boom, sometimes you just got to talk to him. So, runners at the corners, nobody out. And Eugenio Suarez up to hit down. That ball. one in the dirt. And that's ball one. One ball. No strike. Lefty out of the stretch. Runners at first and third. That's in there. And the count is one and one. That's down and in. Could be some action here on this next pitch. Couple runners on. Probably a challenge pitch coming. Oh. Swing and a miss. And that one missed by a ton. I think ultimately you want to tie him up. Get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it. And Laser. Could be extra bases. One runs in. Here comes the runner, the relay, the tag, and out. The base runner did a great job of making that a close play at the plate with an excellent slide. Made the catcher work to get out there and put down the tag. The throw was on the money, and that's what made the difference. Big time play to cut down a run. And 
Here's the catcher, Gabriel Moreno. Bounce to the left side. Anderson to first. Play is made, two out. Batting ninth, the designated hitter, Jordan Lawler. Now a chance for Jordan Lawler. And Boog, I'd say he's due. Splits the plate. That's strike one. Well, we call that keyholing. Even though it's right there and looks pretty good, if he doesn't love it, he's not going to swing that early in the count. Suarez at second with two down. And down on strikes he goes. Inning over, and it could have been worse. They get two runs on three hits, no errors, and one left. We played two full. It's the Diamondbacks two and the Marlins one. All set for the Leading start of the Miami. inning. Here's the second, the second baseman, Luis Arias. Luis Arias. And a pitch. So after scoring ah. runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Come Get that on. hot team back in there to swing the bats. And that's outside. And now it's even one and one. And a breaking ball drops in for a strike. The pitch. That one misses. And that's ball two. Gets a piece and stays alive. Here comes a pitch. Fouled off the plate. They'll do it again. The 2 2. That one the other way. Falls it in for the end. That swing right there tells me he's seeing the ball pretty well. I know it didn't produce a hit, but he made solid contact, and that's all you're looking to do anytime you're at the plate. Now here's the cleanup hitter for Miami, Jake Berger. He reached out a walk his first time. That's off the mark, and that's ball one. The D-backs up by a run. We're here in the top half of inning number three. Right through there for a strike. One down, base is empty. Just missed. There's a strike. Oh. Next pitch misses, Crazy. and the count's full. Got him swinging. Well, he hadn't seen that change up the entire at bat until that put away pitch. And it's pretty tough to deal with as a hitter. You're up there battling, trying to read and react with two strikes, and then all of a sudden the pitch comes out of nowhere, and it's a good changeup. It's just almost impossible to hit it when you haven't seen it. Brian De La Cruz, the next up for the Marlins. He's 0 for 1. Swing and a miss. Nice changeup. one this one popped up foul ground first base side he's there he's got it and that is that nothing doing for the Marlins they're down two to one
And welcome back Leading to the ballpark. The Stepping in is the switch hitting shortstop. shortstop. Geraldo Perdomo. Perdomo. The wide to kick the pitch. Oh, that misses oh, the zone. And that one is and ball one. That clips the corner. Well, he looks fresh out there. Just needs to get a little more confidence and remember how good he's been in the past. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. He's really good hitting the baseball the other way. So credit the pitcher for having him out in front of that pitch. Clearly he had him fooled. Now it's Chase Peterson. He struck out swinging at his first at bat. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Kicks and deals. In the air, out towards left center. Dela Cruz racing over to make the catch. Yeah, I'm looking at his body language, and he just doesn't seem like things are in sync. And the ball's just not coming off his bat the way it did earlier in the regular season. An outstanding hitter in Cattell Marte. Grounded out his first time. And that one is lifted in the air. Garcia drifts towards it, and that's the third out. And we're back. Start of the Miami. fourth. Josh Bell the at the plate season, now. Number nine. Josh Bell. Montgomery back to work. That one fouled off. You know, these Marlins showing great discipline at the plate, and patience definitely seems to be the name of their game in this one. He's only given up one run, but the starter's pitch count is starting to get up there, and that might be the best news yet for this offense. Next offering is down low. You know, sometimes all it takes is getting to the next arm before an offense does any damage, and that might be the case today. Here's a 1 1. And that drops in for a strike. Next pitch is outside. It's a good take. To short, Perdomo. Leadoff hitter retired in the fourth. Good sinker low in the zone right there and produced exactly what he was looking for. The ball on the ground, nice ground out. Jazz Chisholm, Jazz Chisholm Jr., the next up for the Marlins. Bounced up the middle. Whips it to first on the run. And that quickly, two away. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. And now the right fielder, Abasail Garcia. One for one with a single and a run scored so far. Right through there for a strike. Generally, second, third time through the lineup, you want to be able to lean on those secondary pitches and command them. Looks like he's doing a nice job of it. And now the count is even. On the ground, right nope. side, and it goes just foul. 
The Diamondbacks leading by a run. Top half of inning number four. Caught him looking for the K. Miami down in order. And they trail it here two to one. Here in the desert, bottom four. Here's the cleanup hitter for the Diamondbacks, Christian Walker. As a batter, he's known for performing better in these night games. He might start two for two in this one. That one finds the zone. Strike one. All one there. the ground sends it to first one up one down now batting left fielder Lourdes Guriel here's Guriel the walk and a run scored his first time fastball in for a strike going one Good looking fastball right there. Surprised he didn't take a rip at that. I think he got locked up a little bit. And that one fouled off. Base is empty one away. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. On the ground right side. Dives, but it kicks off his glove. Not in time. He's safe. Randall Gritchick now singled and drove in a run his first time through. Had a good eye there. There's a strike. Wing and a miss as he was out front that time. Just misses with that one. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Swing and a miss. Struck him out and two away now. Bogey just ran out of patience there. He took a couple of pitches to even that count up at two balls and two strikes, but that time chased outside the zone. Hey, Eugenio Suarez up to the plate now. Doubled in his first A.B. Wouldn't chase that time. One ball, no strike. Two outs on the corner for a strike. And the count even one and one. Wow, just a beautiful backdoor slider right there. If you've got any chance of hitting that pitch, you have to wait until the absolutely last millisecond. Just a tough pitch to hit and not an easy one to throw either. Guriel leads off first with two down to the inning. Fought off foul. Down the line. Long run on his horse. Won't get to this one. It drops foul. And he deals. Battling here as he fouls it away. Got 
caught him looking, and he didn't like the call. One hit, one left. We're headed to the fifth. It's the Diamondbacks two, and the Marlins one. Back here at Chase Field, top five, John Shabby with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Christian Bethencourt. And a pitch. That's in there. And that's strike one. Activity in the Arizona bullpen. Number 30, preparing to come on if needed. Nelson getting loose as well. And now the lefty. One not ball. close one with that one. And that's ball one. And the pitch. In the dirt, ball two. Kicks and fires. Fights it off, you'll see another. the ground to third throws to first one away here in the fifth now batting so the lineup flips over now it's the shortstop Tim Anderson one for two there's a strike Anderson multi-time all-star 30 years old now, a former first round pick back in 2013. And a foul ball. One down, base is empty. Struck him out looking. Well, definitely a borderline pitch right there, and he didn't look too convinced as he headed back to the dugout. You know, those are tough ones to let go as a hitter, but with the human umpire calling balls and strikes, it's always going to be on you to protect yourself with two strikes. Here's the third baseman. And first offering is fouled off. The pitch. Well, one and one. Off the mark there. Two and one. Two ball, one strike. Hard grounder into the outfield for a knock. And with the inning still alive, here comes the heart of the order. Showed some really nice patience in that at bat. Worked himself into a good count. I really like that swing, man. He didn't just push it the other way through the infield. He drove it that way. And it kind of makes me think he was thinking opposite field as he stepped into the box. Got a pitch he liked, and he got it done. And now let's see if they force some action with good wheels on the bases.
Now it's going to be Luis Arias. And a foul ball. Tying run is at first. And we're at the top of the fifth. Just missed. This might be a steal situation, but that's not your average catcher behind the dish. You have to be careful here. Inside, two balls, two strikes. On the ground, right side, Marte. Third out, and that ends the frame. So, no runs here on a base hit, no errors, and one left. Last half of the fifth coming up. It's the Diamondbacks two and the Marlins one. Bottom of the inning. Here's the catcher, Gabriel Moreno. The wind of the pitch. Just missed. Miami's bullpen with some action. Edward Cabrera, the hard throwing righty, is up and loosening. Rogers, the lefty, warming up as well. On the ground to short, Anderson. Not in time. Great effort, but it's an infield hit. Tough play on a nice backhand stop. Had to be perfect with the exchange and throw to get the out, but it looked like he had to dig in there a little deeper, like he was trying to get a split finger grip or something. Close play, but that little extra time on the transfer made all the difference. Jordan Lawler digs in now. Went down looking on three pitches last time. Let's see if he can be a little more aggressive right here. Going one. Going one. And here it comes. And that one fouled off. And a pitch. Way outside. Gonna count one and two. 0 2 pitch that far out of the zone gives the hitter a little confidence that maybe he can climb back into this at bat. At the belt and fires. Hey. Got him swinging. He chased the changeup. And there's one down. No, oh, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just no to keep that speed off the base pass. It's not just the pitcher. It's well other guys that have to think about it. From well your well infielders well. have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Perdomo up for the third time here. Watches that one miss. Moreno, the runner at first with one gone in the inning. Swing and a pop-up. And that'll fall for a base hit to third. Close play, but in there. Not sure if too many people have been paying attention to it quite yet, Singy, but that extends his hit streak to 11 now. Well, I know he knows about it, even if a lot of our viewers don't, and this is when it's clear it's no fluke. 11 games in a row, man, that's when even the hitting coach starts to leave you alone. You're going so good that nobody wants to mess it up. Next to hit, Jace Peterson. And that's outside. Oh. 
Two on, one out. That's a base hit as a run scores. Well, here we are, third time through the order, and this is where we see the OPS jump up. Manager might have to go to the bullpen a little bit sooner than he anticipated. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. Jesus Lazardo is done, and we'll be back with their first arm out of the pen after a quick break. New now, pitcher now, Edward Cabrera. Pretty Number tight game, so they're looking for quality Edward pitches out of him right here. Got to do his best to keep the score right where it is. Cattell Marte up to the plate. He's been really clutch with runners in scoring position this season, so they'll have to be extra careful in this matchup. Sanker catches the zone at the knees. Not the easiest thing. When you're talking about a guy that's, you know, perhaps is going to be in the rotation, or maybe a long relief guy, to not start an inning, to come into an inning with pressure on it and, and try to get yourself comfortable. 0-1 now. Oh. And that one hit to first. Off balance feed. There's one. To first, not in time. Great effort there. Well, that's great hustle out of the box to get down the line, knowing that a double play will end the inning. Good job at the finish, reaching out for the bag. Now they got runners on the corners and still an opportunity to pick up some runs. And now it's Christian Walker. That one, one not close. And it's one to know. Two on, two outs. Oh. And another ball. He's clearly trying to work him away here. Both pitches off the plate. If you really want to put the ball in play, you're going to have to stay back and drive it to the opposite field. And the right hander deals. Three ball. Misses no with strike. the 2-0. And he's fired three straight outside the strike zone. Lourdes Goriel Jr. waits on deck. And there's the automatic. Right-handed reliever. And that'll load the bases. Maybe a little loss of focus on the mound right there. Pretty much gifted in first base with a quick free pass. Base is full, two gone. And it's Lourdes Goriel Jr. And that one fouled off. Well, he's so good about trying to drive the ball to the opposite field gap in these situations. If he takes that approach, he could bust this game wide open. That misses the zone. And one and one. Base is loaded. Two down. Swing, and this one's bounced to the ground. Throw sails over. He's hit it first. And he's safe at third as they score a pair on the play. Well, some errors hurt way more than others, right? I mean, two runs come in right there, so definitely a tough one to get over. And that could have been a very different result if they make the play cleanly. So two down, Randall Gritchick stands in now for the Diamondbacks. Nope, Started to swing, playing. held up. And the righty deals. That one fouled off. 
The D-backs trying to break this one open. Last half of inning number five. Way out front for strike two. Didn't recognize off speed. Thought it was fastball. A little bit out in front. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. So they get three runs on three hits, an error, but two are left stranded. Five innings complete. It's the Diamondbacks five and the Marlins one. We're back, and they make a change to start the six. The new pitcher, number 30. Well, I got to think he probably has a little extra in the tank facing his former team, and... There's not a player in the league that doesn't get a little extra motivation when he plays against his old squad. Leading off now, Marlins, here is Jake Berger. A strikeout Jake and a walk. Berger. And a pitch. On the corner for a strike. The pitch. One ball, one strike. That one back up the middle and it gets through. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Well, the last 10 games or so now have been batting. anything but fun at the plate for him, Ryan. so that one has to feel Taylor good. Cruz. Just kept it simple, played Pepper with the middle of the infield and took it back where it came from, and there's just no one there to knock it down. Brian De La Cruz, the next up for the Marlins. His righty-lefty splits there. And there's a foul ball. Now this team is definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap. But, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ball game. Next one misses. One ball, one strike. The Diamondbacks with some movement in the pen. Joe Mantiply up and throwing for manager Tori Lovello. Righty delivers, and one and two. Nobody out, runner at first. Fights that one away, still one and two. Really great change of speeds. He goes off the off speed to the fastball, and the hitter doesn't know what's coming next. A punch out there, and now one away. Well, that splitter out of the hand, it just sort of jumps on you, and your interpretation is here comes a fastball again. Well, it never really reaches because the bottom falls out of it, and you swing over the top, and that's why they call it a split-finger fastball because it looks like a four-seamer. Late swing, foul to the left. The 0 1. Double play ball to second. Over to Perdomo. That's one. Double play. They can't seem to break through. Inning over. No runs, one hit, no errors, and no one left. 7 8 9, two up in the home half of the inning. It's the Diamondbacks five and the Marlins one. Bottom of the six. Down the third baseman. Eugenio Suarez. Eugenio Suarez. The right hander back to work. And that's in there at the knees for a strike. The other way. And that's oh. just foul. Going oh, two now. And it finds its way through for a hit. And the leadoff man aboard. I'd say a mistake pitch in an 0-2 count. Too good of a pitch to hit right there. You have the to expand the zone. 14. Keep that leadoff man Gabriel off first base. Moreno. 
Next to hit for Arizona, Gabrielle Moreno. And downstairs. Well, these Diamondbacks doing a good job of simply getting the bat on the ball in this game, and the numbers back that up. They've done a great job finding holes in the defense. Exactly half of their hits have come off the bat less than 90 miles per hour. So the ball isn't exactly jumping off the lumber, but they're finding a way to make it work. Right-hander kicks deals. Two, two. Now he can't squeeze it behind the plate. To second, and he's out. This one in the air center field. And there's two away. The batter, number 10, designated hitter, Jordan. So next is the designated hitter for the D-backs, Jordan Lawler, who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. That That's just ball. misses. Ball one. One ball. No straight. Right. A swing and a miss as he chases way out of the zone. The pitch. Not one even one. close there. And it's 2-1. Back-to-back -back breaking pitches away, you get the feeling as a hitter that the pitcher's afraid of you, that he doesn't want to challenge you. So I think the confidence level is raised right here. Wouldn't chase that time. Just doesn't seem to want to throw him a fastball. The right-hander gives up the two-out walk. One of the things about that two-out walk, the base runner over at first base is going to have a very aggressive secondary lead. So a ball down the line or an end of the gap will produce a two-out RBI, and those are the best. That is, if you are the offensive side of it. Perdomo in the box with two gone, and takes a look at a called strike. I love this part of the game. Does he really want to try and steal second against this catcher? I know he's fast, but it's pretty risky. Over to first, and he saved. Two outs. Out to short. Anderson. Zips it to first. And that is that. One left for the Diamondbacks. They're up 5 1. And we're back. And now the center fielder, Jazz Chisholm Jr. Jazz Chisholm Jr. And he deals. That oh. misses. And that's ball one. The pitch. Sliced hard, but foul. And another ball. Fouls one off. Two and two. And a swing and a miss. One away. I'm not sure that was the exact location the pitcher wanted, yeah, but it worked. He got the, right the swing field. and miss, and I'm sure a bit of sigh of relief after seeing that one go through the zone. And up next for Miami, Avasail Garcia. Got right. it started a little too early. Strike oh, one. One strike. The Marlins down by four here in the top half of inning number seven. Breaking ball through there for a strike. Two really good back-to-back -back sliders. Now in an 0-2 count, he's feeling real confident about finishing this hitter off. He can go anywhere he wants. In the air, out towards right center. Peterson on the move. Pulls it in for the out. Two up, two down. Now batting, 
catcher, Christian Christian Bethencourt. Bethencourt. The next up for the Marlins. And that's off the inside edge. And that is ball one. In there for a strike at the top of the zone. The Diamondbacks leading by four here in the second game of the series. And that one in the air center field. Gritchick drifts towards it. And that'll do it. Starting to run out of outs as they're unable to chip away. Midway in inning number seven, and it's time to stretch. It's the Diamondbacks five, and the Marlins one. And welcome back to the ballpark. And now it's going to be Jace Peterson. The wind of the pitch. That one finds the zone, and it's 0-1. Signs of activity in the pen for the Marlins. J.T. Shagwa up and loosening in the pen. Left-hand hitter waits. He swings and fouls one off. Owen two now. Hit in the air, right field. Garcia should have this one. Brings it in. One down. Maybe caught that one off the end just a little bit. Couldn't quite barrel it up no enough matter. to really Number drive four. it. Second baseman. Here's Cattell Marte. Marte. Right down to shoot, and that is strike oh, one. Liner, base hit. So a man aboard now with one away. Just a solid swing the right there. Caught it out front and ripped yeah. it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. Now, Trevor Rogers on the pitch Number out of the pen here. And Trevor as relievers go, he's Rogers. not a big strikeout guy. He tries to force weak contact, so command and execution are huge for him. Christian Walker stands in now for the Diamondbacks. That one's in there. That's strike one. Rogers, a former All-Star. He features a four-seam fastball, a changeup, a slider, and he works in a two-seamer. Swings through that. Oh, two. Swing and a miss. The velocity blasted it right past him. Dominating strikeout there on just three pitches, and that's what a good power pitcher can do to you. He's hitting his spots, filling up the strike zone. Sometimes he bats over before it really begins. Step off, throw to first. Marte dives back in safely. Guriel stands in here, takes ball one low. Two outs. Now a bullet to second base, but he's got it to end the inning. One left for Arizona. They leave this one, though, 5-1. Welcome back, and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Number Kyle 24. Nelson. And he's got a nice lead to work with, so he should come in throwing strikes, attacking these hitters. 
Back to the top of the Taking Miami the order. Line. Tim Anderson getting ready to hit. Tim Anderson. The wind and the pitch. And that one fouled off. Nelson, a 6-1 lefty. He features a slider, a four-seamer, and occasionally uses a cutter. And the lefty with the 0-1. Popped foul out of play off to the right. Here comes a pitch. Got him looking. That's a strikeout. Well, he's going to have some thinking to do when he leaves the ballpark after this one. That was his third strikeout, and this one looking, obviously, so he's been a little overmatched. He's got to find a way just to be more competitive up there at the plate. Now the number two hitter. And the first pitch misses for ball one. One down, base is empty. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. The fish down by four, and we're in the top of the eighth. Not close with that one, and the count is even two and two. Tap back up the middle. Two up, two down here in the top of the eight. Oh, a well thrown slider like that one can be tough to get in the air. Good downward break on that one. Luis. So up next, Luis Arias. Chris, baseball today, so many strikeouts, and they are available to pitchers. But this is a guy that puts the bat on the ball and is kind of different from the players that we see day in, day out. This one lifted in the air, left field. Dives, but it falls. Could be extra bases. And he's in at second with a two-out double. You know, I was watching his rounds during batting practice today. So impressed with his ability to let the ball travel, go back up the middle and the other way. Sometimes when you step in the box during the game, you get a little anxious and you get away from that. But so far, I've seen him stay consistent with his pregame preparation. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Jake Berger. That misses the zone. Ball one. Man on second, two down. There's the strike up high, and it's one and one. Foul ball. Two outs, and one in scoring position. And that one moves his feet. And it's second. Okay. That one missed. Good slider down and in can be so hard to get on plane with. You're better off taking that pitch. Got him swinging for the strikeout. Couldn't catch up to the heater. One left for Miami. They're down here five to one. Back here in the Here desert, go. here's the center, the, fielder, the center fielder, Randall Gritchick. So easy to look Red at the ball. big boys in this lineup, but he Gritchick. has been a pleasant surprise all season long. Right through there for a strike. Well, he had a pretty go good ball. look at that pitch and not sure exactly what tied him up there. Couldn't pull the trigger. And perhaps the best pitch he'll see in this at bat to hit. Kicks and deals. Pitch misses, 
Now two balls and a strike. Popped up. Settles under it. Brings it in. And there's one away. The batter. The third baseman. Eugenio. Next up for the Diamondbacks. Oh, Eugenio Suarez. Pulls that one foul. Base is empty one away here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Strike two. It might be time to choke up a little bit, get that front foot down early, maybe even just spread out. He's really late right now. Goes down looking for the strikeout. Called strike three and a fastball up in the zone. Frustrating end to the at-bat for the hitter, and I'm sure that's going to sit on him for a little while. You want to be ready to hit the fastball. Sometimes you can overthink things, and I think that was the case right there. Moreno in now. Takes ball one off the plate. Two out spaces empty. That one inside. And yeah, that's ball two. Stairs. Great one. And now the lefty. And that's ball four. One of the things about that two out walk, the base runner over at first base is going to have no a very that aggressive secondary lead. Yes, so all down hitter. the line or Your into the hand. gap will produce oh, a two oh. out RBI, and those are the best. That is, if you are the offensive side of it. Lawler. No. The next to hit takes ball one. That one called just inside, I think, and on the mound, he's trying to get a little bit of an explanation. Doesn't seem to be too bothered by it, though, but he clearly thought it clipped the corner. Kicks and fires. Oh, this is again five in a row. Ball. No strike. Two oh. That clips the inside corner for a strike. One way to make a guy real uncomfortable at the plate is pound him inside with good velocity. They're doing that right here. And a foul ball. Next offering upstairs. 3-2, two, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitter's got to stay focused on the pitch. And foul ball. And the pitch. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. Two outs. Swing and a ball lifted left field. Makes the grab and that's the inning. It's the top of the ninth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Ryan Thompson. And we all know about his slider. It's just filthy, man. And one of the better ones in the game, I'd say. Spin rate's very high, and it just breaks a ton. Now the left fielder, Brian De La Cruz. The left fielder, Brian De La Cruz. The pitch. This one in the air, right field, on his way over. And a quick out, number one. Really nice job to get your first out of the ball game. 
Here's Josh Bell. One for three. Swings through that one. Good one ball, late one sink on that fastball. Out of the hand looks so good. And then by the time it gets in the hitting zone, hard to get the barrel to it. Got him looking. And they're down to their last out. And now the center fielder, Jazz Chisholm Jr. Jazz Chisholm Jr. On the ground, and this should do it. Throw to first, the ball game. And the Diamondbacks even this series up at a game of peace. I'd say you're lying if you say you don't feel a five-game losing streak. This W definitely helps them relax a little bit and take some of the pressure off from it going to a six, seven, or even an eight-game losing streak. 5-1 is how it ends. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew here at MLB The Show, thanks for stopping by. I'm John Chomby. Talk to you soon. Seven runners on base. For the Marlins, one run, eight hits, one error. They left seven runners on base. Time of the ball game, two hours and 45 minutes. Thank you for joining us here this evening.